This passage, turning the water into wine, is all about transformation. It was the first miracle or sign that Jesus ever did. We've already witnessed a miracle here today. Two people came into this church single, but they're not leaving single. They're going to be leaving united and together in March. And they're going to be leaving happy ever after for the rest of their lives, aren't you? <laughs> this is the original plan of marriage given by God. John, the author of this passage here that I've just read, tells us that Jesus performed the miracle of turning the water into wine. Now, Helen tells me that when she first met Chris, she was a manager in, in some hostels in North Wales. And Chris just happened to be working on a steam rail, railway line nearby, fixing the railway tracks. And ever since that time, they've been making tracks together. <laughs> which, has brought them, <laughs> which has brought them here today. You know, when Jesus done miracles in the Bible, and when he told, tells parables, there's lots of levels, lots of meaning, and lots of interpretation to them. Now I'm going to take an interpretation of this message very briefly to use today. An interpretation that I believe just fits in nicely with this marriage ceremony that we're having today. You know, this in this marriage ceremony, it was a full flow. Sometime in the middle of the ceremony, everybody was having a really good time at the reception. There was a free bar. Everybody was happy. Everybody was dancing and singing. Friends and family were having a really good time. Until that is, sometime within this reception, the music got turned off. And the landlord stands up and says, the free bar is closed. There is no more wine. Somebody made a mistake and didn't order enough wine. And so the party has ended. And this is when Jesus' mother came to him and said, is there anything you can do? Because this would have been a social embarrassment in this culture at that time. And Jesus says to his mother, eventually, all right. And he said to the waiters, go fill up those six large barrels of water that is used for the washing of hands and feet for people. Fill them up to the brim. And when they filled them up to the brim, then Jesus said, now, fill up the glasses of everybody at this reception. And so the waiters went round filling up all the glasses of everybody at this reception. And when the landlord tasted it, before he turned on the music again, he came up and he made another announcement. The party is back on again. There is a free bar once again. And he says, but when he tasted it, he said, this wine is even better than the stuff you got right at the start. He said, normally what they do is they give you the good wine first, and then when you've had too many to drink and you don't know the difference, they bring out the cheap stuff and you're too far gone enjoying yourself, so you just drink it like French table wine. Have you ever drunk French table wine? I could drink anything except that. <laughs> the real cheap stuff. And it's a bit like that when they're too far gone, the party's back on, the music gets turned on, and everybody starts enjoying themselves, having fun, they're dancing, and they're just having a really, really good time. You know these six water barrels that was filled up to the brim? The Bible says that it was between 20 and 30 gallons. I'm no mathematician, but let's say that there was 25 gallons in each barrel, and there was six of them. So that makes it 150 gallons. And let's say there's eight pints to a gallon. Eight times 150 is 1,200 pints of really good wine. The best wine that you have ever tasted. That's a lot of wine for any party and for any reception. But you know, I've been in 
in church long enough to realize not everyone believes that this was alcoholic wine. And the reason for this is wine has a bad press. Wine and alcohol is said to bring a lot of destruction to families and a lot of destruction even to marriages. And so therefore people say this wasn't alcoholic wine. But you know, alcohol can be used for good things. It's used in hospitals. It's used in operations. And there's going to be millions of people tonight in this country are going to on wine, on wine with a few, and relax with a few glasses of wine. They're not going to cause anyone any harm. They're going to enjoy themselves. They're going to get up dancing somewhere. They're going to become confident. And they're going to really enjoy themselves. They're going to put music on and they're going to relax, maybe read a book, and they're going to have a really good time. They're not going to abuse alcohol. They're going to enjoy it for the purpose that God intended it to be. You see, the reason I believe that this was alcoholic wine is several reasons. One is reading the context of this passage. I read into it, it was definitely alcohol. The other, the other reason why I believe it's alcohol is because in the culture of that day, it's, it was then, and it still is, it's alcohol of weddings. But here is the main reason why I believe that it was alcohol. Because Jesus is trying to contrast the Christian life with happy people at a wedding, enjoying themselves, singing and dancing, friends and family having a great time. It's the best place in the world to go on this earth to find happy people. And Jesus contrasts that with his disciples and with the people that have faith and put their trust in him. You see, a life lived without putting your faith and trust in him it's like a life of water. It's good. Water is good. You might have good morals. You might have good principles. You might even be a religious person. You might keep the Ten Commandments. But without the transformation from water into wine, there is still something missing. Your mission, your call in life, your fulfillment is still missing. There's a lot of people living a life of water. But God wants to transform your life into a life of transforming wine. Something really fantastic. Jesus says in just a few verses after this, or a few chapters after this, John chapter 10, He says, I have come to give you life and to give you life more abundant. Life to the full. Jesus wants us to enjoy ourselves. He wants us to party. He wants us to celebrate. He wants us to be happy. In fact, the very first Christians in the book of Acts were accused of being drunk because they went out onto the street partying and dancing and celebrating. And people says, these must be drunk with wine. And then I had to explain, no, not with literal wine, but with the promise of Jesus, the abundant life. Their lives have been transformed into confident people from water into wine. And that is the main message of this, uh, pas uh, of this passage. The, uh, the experience of transformation today. Everybody in here has a, a choice to make. Every single person here who have not put their faith and trust in Jesus have a choice. Do you want to remain in a life of water, which is good, but it isn't the best, the original plan of God for your life? Or do you want to put your faith and trust in God and live this abundant life, transformed life? Those who haven't put their faith and trust in God, spiritually you've come into this church single. But God's given you an opportunity like a marriage, to spiritually connect with God through a personal relationship with Him. Each person here can make a choice to walk out of this building, not one, but two, in a relationship with God and Jesus as
as your Savior. That's what can happen. That's the transformation that can happen for every person in this building. Chris and Helen are going to be walking out of here with that transformation. I have experienced it. That's why I know it's an experience like drinking wine, getting drunk, getting married. It's an experience that I experience every single day. It's an experience of transformation that comes on the inside of me, day by day. You know tonight, after we all celebrate, we have a really good time, and I really hope everybody has a really good time this evening. Some people are going to be on that dance floor dancing that you would never dream of once they have a couple of glasses of wine. <laughs> We're all going to be celebrating and dancing and all enjoying ourselves. But by this evening or the early hours of the morning, we're all going to go home, those who have drunk, and sober up. But the message of transformation is Jesus doesn't want us to sober up. Every day we can rejoice and be happy. Not only in this life, but in the life to come. It's amazing transformation. That has happened to me and happened to many people in this building. There's people here that can tell you about the transformation that has happened in their own lives. It was the best thing ever happened to me and it's the best thing they will tell you that has ever happened to them. And that is the simple message that I want to leave to you. The life of transformation. A new life. A good life. And it's just waiting for each person here. Just like a marriage, it's a symbolism of a spiritual union between yourself and God through Jesus Christ. Faith and trust is all that is required. Amen.